Welcome to Lessons in Website Management. I'm Sarah Worthy and I will be talking to you about all of the different pieces that your website needs on a day-to-day -day, weekly basis. And I'll really be talking mostly about how I manage the Shipple and Tenancy websites. I don't do it alone. Well, there's a whole team over here and Shipple has a unique um, perspective within our company that I wish a lot of other companies would be able to adopt because it means that anyone in our company has full access to add a new page, add content, write blog posts, and it really saves me and Caitlin, who are in the marketing communications team, a lot of work. Um, here's some of the things we're gonna discuss. It's going to sort of be in this order. However, throughout, I'm going to have some little tips up in the upper left of the slide. Feel free to think about those, and if you don't understand, because they're just quick ones, I'm happy to go into more detail on them. At the end of the webinar, I will be uploading the video recording of the audio, the presentation, and there will be a website link that I'll send out to you guys in an email that will have all of the resources, links to what I've talked about, and a place for you all to kind of remember all of the material as you go. Um, so I'm Sarah, I'm the one on the left, Caitlin's the one on the right, and, and by the Shipple. My official title here changes a lot, as does everyone's at Shipple. Primarily, my responsibilities are around our tenancy CMS software with product development and understanding what our clients and the industry trends out there are for CMS systems to bring that back and tell our team so we can continue to build out our software the, to meet your needs as technology changes. Uh, Caitlin is my manager and she is really the person who helps wrangle a lot of the data. She came from the SCM team as the manager of that team and has helped me a lot with that. Whereas my job is to talk a lot, write a lot of content. Uh, you know, I'm the, the person who really pushes a lot more of it out there and she helps show the data and the results. And as a team, it works really great. So I'm gonna go through these five quick tips and these are just one minute things for your website. I'm not gonna go too heavy into the development of your website because most of you don't manage that probably. A lot of our clients typically have us do the fine tuning, the design. However, there are lots of things you can do really quickly. And when you see your homepage, it's gonna change. It evolves as you go. You're always adding new content. When you approach it, try to imagine as a visitor for the first time and ask yourself these three questions. What can I do on this site? Why would I do it here as opposed to your competitor or an alternate site? And how do I get started? If you can't really quickly answer those questions, then take a look at why your content is not communicating to your first time visitors and repeat visitors. And a quick tip that make sure you log out of your admin account before you do this, because it's going to look very different when you're logged in as an admin on a site than when you're logged in as, or you're logged out and you're just a visitor. Another quick tip are your menu navigations. Uh, there's a menu on the left and it's actually the connecting, strengthening, supporting, impacting, those are menu navigation buttons. And I think it's a little bit confusing what those are. So when you're doing, it, when you're writing your navigation words there, make sure it's clear, have it be, make a donation, become a member, job directory. Uh, it's seems like it's nice to use those words and connecting, strengthening, strong, emotional words. However, it doesn't tell anyone who comes to your site what's going to happen when they click on that. Where are they going to go? So take a minute and look at that and try to use more clear calls to action on your site so people are under, able to understand what it is they're trying to do. Uh, taxonomy on websites. It's becoming very, very common to have tags and categories on your content management systems, not just within tendency. They have tag clouds for WordPress widgets. It, that stuff has been around for a long time. If you have a Drupal site, taxonomy can be quite complicated, especially for e-commerce and products. And it's really important when you get started with your site and as you go, keep track of the different tags, have a policy within your, your team that's updating and managing your site so that everyone knows how to consistently use those tags. And then that helps people find 
the content that they need much quicker when they're first time visitors. And it helps the whole site be more fluid for the search engines. And then forms, your contact forms. It, I have these form on the left with the get space point news. That's an email subscribe letter. And really in order for someone to join your email list, you just need their email technically. Now you might want their name too. That's a great field, but that's the max you really need. And then if you have a donation form, you're going to need billing information and some of that. However, you want to keep the fields as minimum as you can and get just the information that you're going to need from them because people are much less likely to complete a form if it requires fields that they don't feel is necessary to give you. And the whole point is to get some of that information from them. And then remember sh social sharing buttons. Uh, I have two here, add this and share this are both completely free. You can go to those sites and it's addthis.com and sharethis.com and download their widgets, customize them. It's a little bit of JavaScript that you cut and paste and don't be afraid by the words like JavaScript and HTML because inside of tenancy and most content management systems, you can go into a page and there's the WYSIWYG or rich text editor, as I call it, and you're able to paste that code in there. And then you can put them on your homepage, your event registration pages, blog posts and other you know popular news content, your photos and your videos. And then a very important place to put this, particularly if you're a nonprofit, is that thank you page. After someone submitted a form or purchased something from your website or giving you a donation and they go to that page, it says, thank you. Have those social sharing buttons there and then they can say, I donated on their Facebook page to your organization, to all of their friends. And that gives you this referral back that we'll talk a little bit more um, in a minute. Uh, so think about ways that you can make your content more shareable. And then of course, content is probably the whole point of your website. It's about having that information there so that when prospects and potential members and donors come to your site, they understand who you are, what your organization does, and what's in it for them to keep reading your site. And so every time you create content, you wanna think about what's in it for your prospect, your visitor, so that they'll wanna stay and keep reading. Uh, what I have up here is a study that was done by Tech Target, and they surveyed um, what consumers who were looking to buy a consumer technology product did throughout the buying process. And they did three stages where they were just identifying that they had a problem. The second stage was that they were researching to try to find solutions for their problem. And then the third final stage was creating that short list, comparing them and actually making the decision between the final solutions. And they looked at where those buyers were trying to figure out and find those answers at each of the buying stages. And the number one spot for every stage was a vendor website. So your website is where your prospects are going and they're looking at what you have up there to determine if your solution is the one they want and if it's better than your competitors. So keep that in mind when you're you know, communicating on your website that it, there's a real value to it if your, com if your content communicates clearly to your buyers and your potential members and donors that you are the right option. Um, so that's where mapping your content strategy comes in. And I have a lot of information in links. Content Marketing Institute has tons of information. And when this webinar is uploaded on our page, the links to some of these templates for how to map your content strategy will be available for you guys to get started because it's not something you can do in a 45 minute webinar. And then you're welcome to email me if you have questions as you go. The stages for you're mapping your content are really about understanding who your audience is, what kinds of things they're looking for during those stages in their decision-making process, what answers you need to provide for them. Can you offer them a solution and how do you do that? And then what answers do you already have on your website? If you are, I think everyone here has had a website for a little bit, you've got content up there, where are the holes? Map out 
that question and answer, and then fill the holes with that content so that when somebody comes and has those questions, your website has that answer 24 seven. And this is where I want to talk a little bit about how we do some of this at Shipple. And we have the editorial calendar, the marketing strategy, the content list idea. We manage all of this in a number of tools that I'll go through throughout the team uh, or throughout the webinar. We use a Google Doc for our editorial calendar. It's a spreadsheet that everyone involved in the team has access to. I actually will have a template of like it's literally a copy of it only I remove like tenancy.com and just put your website as like one of the names things like that and you all are welcome to use the exact same thing so you can go through the process and post what contents on your website what you want to have in your email newsletters how you're going to use that across your social networking channels every you know week monthly however you need to do it um and it helps you keep track. You assign owners to each of the content and deadlines, and you can keep track of the links. The marketing strategy, there's templates for that that I will include as well. And it's important that you set your goals in your marketing strategy, and then you talk about how you're going to achieve those goals and how you're going to measure them. That way you have a plan that you can follow consistently throughout the year. And then the content idea list is just as important because it's very it, it's hard to come up with all of the new creative ways to communicate and there's twofold with this one like i said before your buyers and prospects come to get to know if you're the solution that they need and also search engines and new prospects trying to find you they're going to um find you on the internet by doing that search and that regular refresh contents what gets you up top so you have to constantly come up with new ideas. Here's some of the tools that we use. Um, obviously, there's the content management system, Tenancy, which is both Shipple and Tenancy's website. We also have WordPress for our blog. We use WordPress and use a separate hosting provider from the hosting with Tenancy for the pure reason that we have an extra outlet in case something goes down, in case a social network goes down, in case, you know, the blog goes down, our website's still up, if our website goes down. And that just can happen. I mean, everyone heard about the GoDaddy thing where everyone's websites weren't accessible if they were using GoDaddy. So, and, and that's why you have all of those different social networks. And also you always come back to your website as home base so that if any of them aren't around anymore, I mean, no one goes to MySpace really, then that doesn't hurt your web marketing and you don't have to suddenly come up with something. You have all of these other areas that are still pulling in, you know, and engaging your audience. Aviary, Cooler, Snagit, those are all graphics. Uh, Cooler is free, Aviary is free. That allows you to do editing, find out hex codes and colors, themes and palettes. Snagit is a free trial and is $50. Once you pay for it, for the software, and that's not a month, that's just to purchase it. And I use that for screenshots. Pretty much everything that you see on this page might have been taken. All of our screenshots on our website. And it's really a great tool to have professional looking graphics and images on your website, inside of your pages, and on your social networks for $50. And you don't have to know Photoshop, which is really complicated. So now it gets really easy. Uh, your email newsletter campaigns, I have MailChimp campaign monitor thing. Those are how you send out to your subscribers and you want to make sure you have social sharing in them. Uh, on the left, I, have, I show Google Docs and then I wanted to share a couple of editorial and content tools out there that are relatively inexpensive. If you're looking for something that's a little bit more um, managed and controlled and built out for your content marketing and you can use Divi HQ and Contently. Both of those are a lot of fun to try and you want to find the one that works best for you. And then obviously search engines, bit.ly is a link shortener that helps you analyze who's clicking on your links and how they're being shared. So it brings back that analytical data. And there's a really cool app out there that's if this, then that, that lets you create recipes to automate. So one of mine is that whenever I upload a new photo set to Flickr, it automatically posts a message that I customize that says, check out the new photo set. And it will name the name of the photo set in there 
based on whichever name I gave it on Flickr for that set, and it'll automatically post to my Facebook. So those types of things allow you to automate some of those steps because it, it can be really time consuming if you're trying to post a blog post, update an article on your website, tweet and Facebook and LinkedIn, all of that. So I like to find tools like if this and that that automates it for me. And I talked a little about, about analytics in the previous slide. We have a lot of uh, great presentations that talk about Google Analytics, how to use them. Those will be linked on our site, of course. I just want to start with basically a lot of people think about the search engines and the traffic to show proof of how many visitors you're getting and how that shows as conversions to sales. You can also use that to come up with content ideas. You look at visitor trends, engagement trends. What site, what pages in your site are people finding? That means that that's what the search engines are giving them or people are sharing to them. Where are they clicking through next? How long are they staying on different pages? What content themes do you see? Perhaps you see that your most popular content are your quotes or your photo albums on your website, the most visited. So that means you want to focus on providing more photos or more quotes because that's what people are coming in and finding and seeing for more traffic. And then you also can look at the top keywords that are directing traffic to your site. And that will tell you things like, um, what people are searching for, what their problems are that they are using in those words so that you can add more of those inside of your content and the search engines will direct prospects who are searching that are the right buyers to you. We have a free tool over at um, shivel.com SEM tools that you can enter in your homepage or another URL. You can even do this with your competitors um, and it will tell you how many and what keyword phrases are found on that page. And if you're seeing that search engines are sending your target audience to you via a certain search phrase, for example, maybe it's Houston Web Design, and then you put your website in here and Houston Web Design didn't show up at all, then you know you weren't using the right words in your content that people were finding you from. So by adding more of those key phrases, you would be able to get more traffic. Getting the entire team involved, that's um, probably my favorite. People ask about the ideas and I talk about the search engines. Uh, internally, your sales team is probably your best resource. And uh, for nonprofits, it, you know, it's the people who are out there managing the events, talking to donors, running your fundraising program, and they they're going to be hearing the questions that are being asked about your organization, about what you do, about the problems that are out there that they're experiencing and how it can be solved. We talk to our sales team every week before we're planning our content for the newsletters and things like that. We talk to our project managers to see what events our clients have going on. We try to ask our clients. I read my clients' newsletters as many as I can. I actually get Lawrence's it's on the week, and I want to say it's like every Saturday morning, the waves and packets. I love it. I don't understand half of it. It's all about astrophysics. Um, but I do love it, and I, I try to keep up. So that gives me an idea of what our audience is doing, which, of course, is interesting to them. It's about them, and it's important to them. And so I can try and match my content up with what's interesting to the audience by keeping an eye on those types of trends. Um, there's a lot of different creative ways to try to find some of those. And um, I share some more of those later on in the webinar. So you'll get that link. I have a sauna up here. It's another free tool we use. It basically just lets you keep lists. I talked about that content ideas. This is actually a screenshot. So you can see I've got my weekly to do's. You can share this among, you just add another team member. You can control whether they can view it, whether they can manage it. I can assign tasks to other people in my team just by you know typing in their name. And then we both keep up. I can check off a checklist once something's done and it archives it. We have our editorial calendar of ideas, different issues that we need to take care of. I also use it for listing up conferences that are coming up. So it's a tool that I just adore and it's completely free. I highly recommend it. 
so content curation is actually something I think people don't necessarily understand as well. And it saves a lot of time in your day if you're involved in managing your website's content. And the whole idea is about getting your content to be found by the people who care about it and have them share it and recommend your products, your service, your organization. So it involves formatting it. And it's that process of you write a blog post, then you put it in your email newsletter, and maybe you send a tweet and you post something on LinkedIn and on Facebook. And you have to format for each of those. You know, I have this study that I found that shows that tweets with less than 100 characters are shared more often. And that's simply because if you think about it, somebody retweeting is still limited to 140 characters. So if you're at 139 characters and they retweet it, they can't. It's now over 140 because it adds their the retweet in your organization's name in front of it to that 140. So by thinking about that type of format, and of course, um, somebody recently posted, I think it might have been on Facebook, why do people use hashtags on Facebook? They don't do anything. That's right. They don't. So why do you do it? I think some of it's habit. However, if you think about you have a lot more space and words and there's always an image that shows up with your post. So make sure that you're thinking about that when you're formatting it. And this is from Beth Cantor, and it has a lot of tips just about how to get the idea of building in content curation into your practice. Um, and so then here's social media and your website and how they integrate together. Besides just that content curation idea of repurposing your content, it helps to know why and what is the best thing to share on social media. You know, sometimes those press releases really aren't going to get a lot of traffic on Facebook, let's be honest. Um, however, 31% uh, of traffic referred to sites on average came from somebody on a social network sharing it with their friends. So there's a lot of value to getting people to your website and learning about your organization and the solutions you offer through social media. The top three most shared are topics around food and around cute animals and the people. So I have these examples where uh, the Susan B. Cummins was uh, given a beautiful cake for one of their races by a sponsor. So they're thanking their sponsor and sharing the news with this amazing cake. I mean, it's just a construction of awesome. And then the cute kitties and bikinis. Bar Keystone is focused on helping animals get adopted. And so they share photos of cute animals which relate to their cause. And they also include their message about coming to adopt their animals at these special adoption events so that when people share the cats and bikinis, they'll see the message about Bark and what it's doing. And those who read it, there's a good chance they'll increase the traffic to Bark's site and to their adoption events. And then the final with Houston Food Bank, they're thanking their volunteers. And I bet every single one of those volunteers in those pictures was happy to share the pictures of, of the speaker. And that shares the mission and the cause from the Houston Food Bank across all of those volunteers, networks, and communities. And that's how you expand your reach. You just have to think about what's something that everyone else is going to engage and share. And I would say one tip is if you wouldn't share it on your Facebook wall personally from your organization, don't post it on your Facebook page for your organization if you're in charge of that. If, you know, if you're not going to share it, it's your mission, it's your passion, it's your business. And if you don't think your friends will care, well, they probably won't and your clients probably won't either. So keep that kind of thing in mind. Uh, here's some of these tools that I've been using. These these are all specifically the ones that I love and we use at Shipple. We use Sprout Social. It's not free and it is around, I think, $39 a month, and then you can add additional people in your organization for teams. I think it's like nine a month, and that's not exact, but it's pretty cheap for all the tools that you get for being able to schedule tweets. They let you um, find content later and tell you the best times. There's all these analytics and demographics that you can get. You can discover who the influencers are around certain topics that maybe aren't following you and build up a conversation with them. Reach out, start talking to them. 
I use Twitter lists in conjunction with TweetDeck to keep track of all of the information when I'm listening to the industry trends. It's really hard to keep up with thousands of people on Twitter. Uh, the messages go by. So I try to segment it by industries and by relevancy. So I have like, I'm on the committee for space of Houston and I try to keep up with the people who are talking about my organization so we can keep expanding our reach and tell other people. So I have a list for that in this example. And of course my social friends, because with all of the stuff going on, I might miss a friend of mine who's having an event or a party or something and they're right here and I, I want to go say hi to them. So I have to segment them out in these lists and that helps me notice what's going on better. Engageo is a new free tool that actually sits inside of your Gmail if you use Gmail and it brings all of the conversations that your friends and your followers on Twitter are saying about you or talking to you about. It provides analytical data and it helps you get those conversations that you're involved in to keep going. I don't know how many people have had somebody say mention them on Twitter and it might be a week before they responded and for me it helps if that mention gets put right in my email box and I see oh I've got a new Twitter message too. Um, so that helps me keep up and respond faster, which is really important to engagement. And then I've talked about add this before and um, how great those one, those tools are. And then content isn't just walls of text, right? Uh, the process of sharing content from your website across social networks is even more effective when you use images and visual aids. And so I've shared some tools here and I, from your tendency website, you can have your videos also posted on YouTube and Vimeo, which gives them another outlet to be reached and to be shared across. There's tools like Cuckoo, which is video contests. So an organization can talk to its community and offer prizes and other fun, just, just to have fun sometimes. And manage it through a platform like Cuckoo. There's other contest platforms that post with Facebook and social networks. And then your audience can make videos and they can take photos. They can share things on these contest platforms to win prizes from you. That gets them talking about you and they're making all of this fun, you know, activities and it builds a relationship between your organization and your fans. Visually is for in infographics. I think it creates free ones at a certain level. We've all been talking about Pinterest. Uh, there's another statistic coming up. Pinterest, Flickr, SlideShare, all of these are different ways you can take content from your site, like your photos, your videos. This presentation will go up there. And to sh kind of talk about how we do it with the webinars as an example, we'll have a landing page on the website specific to the webinar that we gave. We'll have a slide share that we post on SlideShare. We'll embed it on the landing page along with links to other resources. And then we will put up the video on YouTube. We'll embed that in our video gallery. We will share that across Facebook as well. We'll have photos from events and screenshots from the video on Pinterest. We'll share the whole thing on Tumblr. Uh, there's, you know, <laughs> it, and it is a little bit of a, a juggling act to kind of do all of that. However, the benefit is that you increase your likes, your comments, the sharing of your different posts. And the study on the right talks about there were 32%, I believe was the number of people who actually bought from a, an organization because they saw on one of their social networks an image that linked to the website for that organization. And then 32% of those people who saw that image and clicked to it made a purchase. So that's one third of the people who are viewing your images and clicking through that are actually buying as well. It's pretty good numbers. And then this shows of the, that 32% that had clicked to purchase, what it was they were looking at. And so one of them was saying, yes, clicking directly on the image um, took them to the retailer and that's what made, you know, one of the noticeable differences. So, and then it took them to the product, I think. And then they'd seen the 27% before below that was that they had seen the thing that they'd wanted to purchase, but hadn't taken the time. And then seeing it on their social network again, that was like, oh, I've been putting that off. Let me click and go buy it now. So it, it hits them at those different stages where they've never heard of you, but they see it where 
they weren't thinking about it at all um, or when they had been thinking about it for a while and they hadn't acted until they saw it. So you're helping to change their behavior and produce more sales. And I've gone through this, I think, a little quickly just because there's so much and I wanted to make sure it was in there for you guys to take time and I want to give you time for questions and answers. So remember, you've got to just take time sometimes and and stop, go do something fun, visit a park, hang out with your kids. Um, it can become really stressful to try to come up with new ideas all the time and to make sure every social network is monitored. Don't try to do every social network. Use the analytics and the tools to also determine where your audience is most engaged and stay on those networks. You don't have to be on 10 different ones, the best two or three, whatever your organization can manage. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and then we have time for any questions that you guys might have. And I see we have some new people who have joined us. So I'm going to unmute you. If you don't have a mic, you're welcome to type in the chat box. And um, does anyone have any questions? Did I go over anything and you want more detail? What is the best, um, you know, how can I help you guys today? For this coming in late, do you want to know what you missed? Yes, we are recording it right now. And I'm not even going to worry about editing it. I'm just going to let it get up there. It will be on... Uh, the tenancy website, it'll be out in our newsletter enlisted on Shipple, and I will send everyone who was registered an email with the links. <laughs> yeah. And the presentation, and I have so many notes and links and template references that you guys are welcome to go through, and it'll all be on one page. It, you won't have to scour the internet for it. And then does anyone want to share one of their biggest website management problems? Because I, I love to hear what you guys are trying to, to do. And then maybe I can make a webinar on that. So the jobs I've written down are nothing billing to that. Not one. I'm going to go ahead and mute everyone. Um, so, yeah, an example would be great. So if you have all of the content already written, um, it, it goes back and I'll, I'll just flip through these slides. And I, I'm going to say the question out loud since um, I'm recording this and I'm not sure if the chat's seeing screen, but one of the questions was that, um, how do you go about organizing all of the material? For example, when you have a ton of content, how do you start by organizing what's important? And that's definitely a great question. One of the things that I'll talk about, well, that will be on that leaning is our template for how we do the editorial calendar. And it really starts with your marketing strategy where you lay out your objectives. Why do you have a website? What value do you want to get from your online web marketing in your website with your organization? So, for example, a nonprofit might be to grow their memberships and to increase their online donations and event registrations. Um, it's generally going to be business focused around revenue um, and then also around brand awareness and PR. And so for businesses, it would be how do I grow leads? How do I increase conversions? If you are selling your products online, how do I increase the sales directly through the website? And so those are going to be your goals in your marketing strategy. And then you set well, what does that mean on my website? If I want to sell my products, well, then you're going to need content that explains how your products 
solve the problems of your buyers. So when you go through and you'll learn the steps of um, looking at analytics, talking about what your buyers are doing at the different stages of their purchases. I'm flipping through slides here, so not in order. Um, however, that will give you the idea of what's the most important. There's actually a content white paper that I'm almost finished that's like step by step how you you know, determine what content you need and then prioritize it. Things that are the calls to action that allow them, the visitor on your site to do the action that you need to achieve that goal. So if you need your goals, increase donations, you're going to need a donations form. You're going to need something that integrates so they can pay for it. And you're going to need the content that communicates at that emotional level, that motivational level, the what's in it for me level that your donors have when they visit. And so if that's your most important goal, you would prioritize those items to make sure the donation happen. And then you would test it by walking through the process and getting friends, community people to just test it for you and see if they get to your website, do they know what to do? And you have to tell them what to do. If you want them to donate, you have to say, donate now. Join our membership program buy our products you have to tell people what you want them to do it's and it's it's actually very simple it that it it's almost too simple so we often don't think about it does that answer your question yes totally and i'd muted everyone again um because i think everyone here uh, except Lawrence didn't have a mic. So feel free to keep typing. If you have other questions, um, go for it. And then all of this will also be there with, and, and I've got templates again, that are exactly copies of what we are using and templates that I found. It's, um, it's really helpful to have those types of things I found. So I'm happy to share what we use. We usually adopted them from a template someone else shared with us. I'm just going to type there too. Are there any more questions? Comments. What else would you like to have had here? What other webinars do you guys want? Or you guys can go back to work because I know we're all really busy. Over, I, I could sit here and ask you questions um, about what else you all need. Because that's how, again, by asking you guys what you all want, we create content for it. So... I, it's, I, I kind of find that like a perfect example. Yes, this will be on SlideShare too. Thank you all for coming. If you have any other questions, I'm happy to answer them via email, Twitter, follow at Tendency on Twitter, go to our blog if you want to know more, uh, and you'll be able to find us, everyone here probably also knows about Shipple on Twitter and the Shipple blog, all great places to find more information and to reach any one of us and start a conversation and tell us how we can help. I'm going to go ahead and end the recording.